Hello again boys and girls. Today in our literacy lesson we're going to be having a go at seeing if we can use some conjunctions to add detail. We're going to be continuing to look at non-chronological reports and see if we can maybe explain in more detail by using those conjunctions to link and extend our ideas. So to be successful in today's lesson we're going to first of all see if we can name a range of conjunctions. We're going to see if we can explain the difference between subordinating and coordinating conjunctions which I know we've looked at before. We're going to see if we can use some conjunctions to add detail and we're going to see, maybe as a challenge, if we can begin a sentence with a subordinating conjunction to vary our sentence structure. So, just have a think to yourself. What conjunctions do you know? I'll give you a clue. A coordinating conjunction that I can think of is the word and. A subordinating conjunction that I can think of would be the word when. What other conjunctions can you think of? Pause the video for a moment, and in a moment, on the next slide, I'm going to put some of the conjunctions that you might have come up with. Have you had some thinking time? Okay, here's the ones I've come up with. And, or, which, because, if, when, but, so. They're not the only conjunctions, but they are the conjunctions that we can use to extend and link our ideas. These ones here, and, but, and or, are usually used as coordinated conjunctions. That means that they're ones where one part of the sentence is here, another part of the sentence is here, and you use that coordinated conjunction just to join those two sentences that make sense together. The other conjunctions are usually used as subordinated conjunctions. That's where you've got a sentence, you use a conjunction and you pin something else onto it. You can put the conjunction here, or you can put the conjunction here, and pin another part onto that sentence. But the other part that you pin on wouldn't make sense by itself. That means that the two parts of the sentence, this one would make sense by itself, this one wouldn't. So it's a subordinated conjunction. It will make more sense when we actually get started with it. So what I've done is I've had to think of two very simple sentences about foxes that we can maybe add a bit more detail to, to extend our sentences. So here's my first one. My first one says, foxes eat lots of different food. Now we know that because in our research that we did the other day, we know that they eat lots of food because they're omnivores and because they can scavenge and find different things that, uh, depending on where they live. If they live in a rural area, which has got lots of people around, they might end up eating cat food, they might end up eating garbage. Uh, if they live in, in an area where there's lots of animals to eat, like uh, little mice or worms, they'd eat those as well. So they eat lots of different food. Let's have a think about how I can extend my sentence then, just to add that bit more detail. Foxes eat lots of different food, and I know that they eat in lots of different places. So I'm going to use the word because for this one. Foxes eat lots of different food because they are omnivores that scavenge to find whatever, whoops, whatever food they can. In my sentence, I used the conjunction because, and I added this extra detail, which I also knew about foxes. So it's quite easy to do, isn't it? All you need to do is think about what extra information you'd like to give the reader, and then use a word to join that bit of writing on. Let's have a look at the second one together. The second bit of information I've got is, some foxes live in the countryside. Well, we know that some live in the countryside. We know that some live in the busy cities as well. So if I was joining that idea of them being in the countryside with the idea of them being somewhere else it's an opposite thing isn't it and I would probably use the word but for an opposite sentence so some foxes live in the countryside but other foxes live in the busy cities so now I've added a bit of extra information I've got that word but and if I have a look at my two sentences now Ignoring the word but, I think they both make sense. Some foxes live in the countryside, other foxes live in busy cities. Both of those would make sense by themselves, so that makes that a coordinated conjunction. Okay, This one would be a subordinated conjunction, because if I just had, they are omnivores that scavenge to find whatever food they can, I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Unless I've got some information about foxes already in that sentence, I don't know what you're referring to, so it makes it a subordinated conjunction. Can I show you a little bit of technique of something you can do to meet that top part of the success criteria? Remember, the top part was to begin a sentence with a subordinated conjunction. Now, it's very unusual for you to use but as a subordinated conjunction opener. But I know another word that means the same as but that I could use at the beginning of a sentence. 
And a word that means the same as but would be the word although. So let's change that but to although. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that whole part of the sentence, although other foxes live in busy cities. I'm going to take that and I'm going to move it to the beginning of the sentence. So let's drag that to the start. I need to do a bit of editing here. I need to start my sentence with a capital letter. Although other foxes live in the busy cities, I'm going to pause there, so I need a comma, and I need to change that capital S to a little s. Some foxes live in the countryside, full stop. Let's read that sentence as a whole now, see if it makes sense. Although other foxes live in busy cities, some foxes live in the countryside. That makes sense, doesn't it? And this time I've started my sentence with a subordinating conjunction. Subordinating conjunctions that are quite easy to use at the start of the sentence would be, it would include although, when and if. If I was going to start a sentence with one of those conjunctions, those are the three easiest ones I believe. So why don't you have a go at doing that today to make your writing a bit more interesting. Okay, so your task. I'd like you to have a go at using the sentences and extending them by using conjunctions to make them more detailed and more interesting. On the DB primary task which I've set you, there are two choices of tasks. There's an easier task where you have to add the conjunction in, and there's a more challenging task where you have to extend the sentence yourself. You choose the one that's right for you. But if you do the one that's easier and you find that it's too easy, just move on and have a go at the harder one. There's no point doing something which is too easy for you, but at the same time, if you're struggling with the challenging one, why don't you have a go at the easier one first of all? When you finish that, come back to this slide and we'll have a look at the open assessment together. Okay, so today our objective was to use conjunctions to add detail. Our next step would include naming a range of conjunctions. It's very important to know what conjunctions there are. Understanding and explaining the difference between a subordinating and a coordinating conjunction. I explained that in this video, so if you're not sure, why don't you re-watch that part of the video so you can find out. To use conjunctions to add detail, did you actually use a conjunction and add your own detail, or were you just sort of experimenting with using conjunctions today and putting them in the right space? And did you have a go at beginning a sentence with a subordinated conjunction? If you didn't, maybe you can have a go at that in the future.